Los dos sí, estaría por también sobre que son osos a la sobre Die Grenzen von Freiheit sind sicher in den Ende nicht die Gern der Grenzen in der Mitte Welt. Er hat in seinem Bericht Rechnung getragen. I was a student and I was in the Parliament in Strasbourg just on a, on a visit. And I sat in the public gallery with the headphones on and just turned the button and listened to these languages. And I still get goosebumps just thinking about it now and thought, this is magic. It's absolutely amazing. And, and that, you need that. That, that moment when you think this is an amazing thing to do and I want to do it. I stress it a lot with the visitor groups that we get. I set them down in the plenary and I say put on your headphones and what you'll find is that everything that's being said down there, you can hear it in your language. And then somebody comes up and says, but how can this be? There's a gentleman down there speaking and what I hear is a woman's voice telling me what he's saying. And I say, no, look, what's happening is he's speaking Estonian and there's a lady interpreter who's translating into Spanish what he's saying. Interpreting is a job which you do in an atmosphere where there may be a lot of stress. So the interpreter has to be able to handle that kind of situation. You also switch very fast from one speaker to the next, and you switch languages too, from Finnish to Greek to Portuguese to German to Lithuanian. But I adore it, and I find it's difficult, but you are pumped full of adrenaline, and you do that for two hours, and afterwards you're exhausted. It's a hard job. It's an odd job in lots of ways as well. It's a strange thing to do, to, to be all these different people, and not to have any control over where you work, when you work, how fast, how slow. If you're feeling tired, it's, it's too bad. You can't think, well, today I'll close the office door and just do a few emails. You know, you're in the booth, you have to perform to their speed and their rhythm. And that, that can be very frustrating, that, that lack of control. We need people with an excellent knowledge of, their, of the languages they work from, but perhaps even more important, an totally perfect command of their main language, of their mother tongue, because that's what, what people hear. The, the members of parliament sitting in the meetings, the delegates in the committees, all they hear is the output, they hear the mother tongue. And that has to be so strong that even under the greatest pressure it won't crack. Obviously our interpreters need a very sound knowledge of the techniques of interpretation, of simultaneous interpreting, consecutive interpreting, and that's what they're doing in the universities at the moment, and that's what's happening here. They're showing us their technical skills in simultaneous and consecutive. Behind us today, there is a, a virtual masterclass happening, and what we're doing is linking in to Geneva, Paris, and Prague, and we have interpreters, trainee interpreters, in those three universities doing their interpretation exercises and being assessed by expert staff interpreters here in Brussels. Ожогов могут надеяться на то, что их им сделают пересадку и это это эта пересадка будет успешной. Die aus diesen körpereigenen äh, Zellen gezüchtet. Uh, I think it was a very good performance overall. I think you rendered the message very well. Le plus grand succès que l'on a obtenu dans ce domaine concerne les greffes de peau. Le e-learning c'est un complément. E-learning is a very valuable addition, which really puts the European institutions centre stage. It shows civil society that all of the know-how that we have hidden in the institutions is not only used for the benefit of the institutions themselves, but it can also help students to train for a qualification which has tremendous opportunities. The member states are not always aware of just how important this training is, and so the European institutions assist them by filling in certain gaps. We can help, for example, by sending experienced interpreters to teach young students for a while, setting the standards very high. The universities are a bit like the factory which produces the raw material that we need in order to function. It's therefore vital that we work together. The European Commission and the European Parliament have set up the EMCI, the European Masters in Conference Interpreting. 
in order to create a network of universities which work on the basis of the same set of standards so that they produce interpreters at the required level. That's why it's absolutely essential to have synergies between foreign ministries, national education ministries, the heads of the major universities and the European institutions who are, after all, the biggest recruiters of interpreters in the world. Really simultaneous is the most difficult skill of all to learn. Consecutive has its own difficulties, but at least there you hear the entire speech before you have to interpret it. So you know what that person has said, you know where it's going, you know the conclusion. In simultaneous, you just have to follow with it. And the speed in simultaneous can often be one of the most difficult things to keep up with. Before the Second World War, there weren't any interpreting booths, and so the consecutive we do now is the same as then. It doesn't require technical equipment. The speaker delivers his speech of between five and eight or nine minutes. The interpreter takes notes and afterwards interprets the speech into his language, but it's a special note-taking technique. It's not like the shorthand we had in the past. We note down key ideas which jog the memory. The interpreter is bound by professional secrecy. All of the meetings where he or she works are covered by the principle of professional secrecy. And so the interpreter is a bit like a priest who may not reveal anything that was said to him in confession. It's very much the same thing. It is a very demanding job. It drains you, but it's very rewarding. It's a job you do because you love it. There can't be many interpreters who don't believe passionately in what they are doing. It's a job that you can do as long as you still feel that buzz. The challenges are keeping up with the information. Things change all the time, new subjects, new members, new people, new issues, and trying to keep on top of, of what's happening and keep on top of the information so that you're never left behind or surprised by things that you hear in a meeting. And of course, keeping up the languages, keeping up your language knowledge, you know, every, with every language that you work from. We interpret faithfully and accurately from the speaker. So if a speaker is insulting, vulgar, swears, then we have to reflect that. As a rule, though, we would take it down a little bit. Never increase it, never make it worse. And active languages. As I said earlier, my active language is English. Notre travail, à chacun de the work that each of us does depends on the quality of the work of our colleagues. When you go into the booth and you've prepared everything, and you know very well that the first subject to be discussed will be cars with green engines, let's say, and then the chairman comes in and starts to talk about yesterday's football match. Well, you can't say, well, I didn't read the paper yesterday, so I don't know who won the match. That's just not possible. You have to be curious about everything. You have to have an open mind. And you learn to like even the things that you don't really like. Can you be certain that the parliament will give you work or...? <laughs> so it depends. What languages do you have? If you have uh, on top of French, English, Greek and Maltese, then you can do whatever you want. First, thank you, Alice. Thank you. You get to be a part of history in the making, if you, know, if you want to put it in those terms. You know, I feel that I've made a contribution, however small, but nonetheless I think you know, I'm a part of it. And I've been to the most amazing places, seen things, heard things that I really never thought I would. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. No Tibetan. You have to want to communicate. You've got to understand the meaning of speech and of movement. And it's that, that urge to communicate that, that we really look for, that spark in a student is, is what we're looking for. So at that time, we could no longer imagine to return back to a single language environment. Uh, it's really enriching to have all these different cultures, communities, languages in here. We learn the one or the other as time goes by. It's a positive experience. It's a challenge to make it happen every day, but we like it, we love it, and I think we couldn't imagine to go back to where we were before. 